Hello, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to Ongaku to You, the podcast where three friends come together and break down what's new in the Japanese music industry. This is the podcast for May 3rd, 2019. I'm your host, Ken, and with me we have Luna. Hello, everyone. Oh, happy Reiwa, by the way. I was going to say, I said that at work the other day, and... All my coworkers except one looked at me like I was crazy. <laughs> uh, for anyone that is from the Japanese side, Kotoshimo and Oreiwa mo yoroshiku o nagaishimasu. So yeah, don't don't worry. It's the new new year, new generation, new era. The emperor passed over from well, not died, but he、uh, abdicated. Yeah, abdicated his power to the new emperor. And it's fine. It's like I said last last week. Once we get to、uh, the 18th year of Reiwa, that's when we're gonna have some trouble. <laughs>、mm-hmm. <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I'm giggling a little bit. But yeah, How have we been? Uh, uh, let's just say extremely busy and exhausted. How about you, Ken? Same. We are in the middle of Golden Week and. I mean, I'm not getting new orders from Japan, but every little problem, s these customers just complain and moan. And I don't, I don't want to deal with this. It's stupid because <laughs> they think they're so high and mighty. I understand. The company that I'm with is a very popular company, so they would complain and moan because of the name. Saying, h、huh, I don't get the service because it was wrong. I was waiting for this stupid tour. Blah, 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 blah. Sounds like they, they, they have the whole customer is first type of thing and, you know, do the most for your customer, I'm guessing, right? Yep, yep, yep. I know、That's、that motto. The... <laughs> Where I used to work, we always believe the customer gets what the customer wants and the customer was always right, no matter how big of a jerk they were. Besides yep, a few、yep. managers who'd stick up for you. But. Yeah, I know that feeling, and、uh, not a good.、Uh, yeah, it sucks. I, yep. But yeah, if you guys didn't know, Gray isn't here. He's、uh, actually working, I believe, right? <laughs> he is. He's working tonight, unfortunately. I know he, he would wish if he could be here if he, if he was able to. Yes, yes, yes. But yeah, let's go down to what we've been listening to. Start with you. So I. Actually, haven't listened to that much this week with everything going on. I listened to Riri, which we will we'll have been listening to her, which we'll get into later. And I was listening to Kodokami's Driving Hits 9 still. This time I was listening to the remix with the ballads. So all the ballads were remixed and they were all more upbeat ballads. I actually enjoyed a lot of the remixes, there were some really, really good ones. Some of them、mm. I thought were way too sped up that it sounded really weird, like Dance in the Rain. But I love the remix of Hand because I thought it was well done. And you had a really good remix. So it was actually a. If you can get Driving Hits 9, it's a three disc set. I highly recommend it because all three discs are fantastic and it's worth the price of. It was like 35 yen. Or 3,500 yen, let me rephrase that. So $35. 30 to 35 USD. Really good. And then, sent, it's a good price for three CDs for 30 bucks. It's like $10 each. That's good for Japan prices if you think about it. Yes, that is very good for Japan prices. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it was worth every cent. And, it come, and mine came in a beautiful slip because I got the first press edition, but it's still a great set. The other thing I was listening to is I was. I, I, when I need to sleep and I don't have background noise, I need something calming and relaxing. So I was listening to Kokia, who is a Japanese singer, but I don't know how to describe her musical style because she's not Enka, she's not opera. She, it's, she's a very unique voice and she can go opera like. She also has done a lot of Celtic stuff, like Irish music. And she's done a lot of themes for anime music, which always have the opera like voice in them.、Mm. And I listened to her this week because I was in, in a house by myself. I didn't have any white noise and I couldn't find anything to create that. <laughs> so I turned on Kokia and 
took me, I think, three albums before I fell asleep because it was just her voice is so beautiful. Plus, I was a little creeped out and it was storming. <laughs> so that didn't help. And I, you know, by myself in a house and sleeping on the floor. But Kokia really calmed me. And if you get a chance to check her out, my favorite album is Aiga Kikoedu. It is a beautiful album, and her Remember Me album is fantastic, and she has several best albums. Her voice is one of my favorites, and her Irish album is amazing. <laughs> her Celtic is really good. <laughs> oh, wow. She actually did a good job, and I I loved it. It That's really all I've listened to this week, to be honest, and besides the Oricon. So what about you, Ken? What have you been listening to? Well, I went to re-listen to Roselia's first album, Amfang, because it's the anniversary of the release. So that's literally the the one-year anniversary of when I just found out I'm not going to have money anymore due to Bang Dream. <laughs> <laughs> Besides that, I've been listening to Tendre's new song. He just dropped a new song called Sign. He actually dropped the music video for it. It's actually really good. So... I was picking that up. It's available on Apple Music if you guys care about that. It's probably on Spotify, too. And besides that, I was listening to Clarity, which is Pasco's latest album that released a couple weeks back. I never, I bought it, but I just never got the, the chance to dive in, so to speak. And I was like, oh, man, there there are some really good songs that I'm pretty sure Gray is just like, why are you listening to this? Why is this metal? The metal freaks me out <laughs> kind of thing. But besides that, just that and my Juicy Playlist. Just the th three or four major things. But yeah, with that, let's go a little bit into the news. And before we do the release stuff, I actually wanted to talk to you, Luna, about this. What do you think about the AAA stuff that's been going on? We intentionally kind of didn't cover it because... A lot of it was up in the air during this time. Mm -hmm. And now that it kind of just dust settled, how do you kind of feel about what's how the, the situation happened? Well, it, it's I feel like being over there, it might be a little different than we see it here. I, from what, huh, what he did was a really jerk thing to do, do. I don't care if you're drunk. I, so what, what? we'll say what he did. It was Urata Naoya, correct? Yeah. And I just I wanted to make sure I said his name correctly. <laughs> and I, I, I'm I familiar with him. He did a song with Mei J and Hamasaki Ayumi besides being, you know, one of the lead vocalists in AAA. And so pretty much he was in a convenience store and he was trying to, I would say, hit on this woman, like flirt with her. She was kind of pushing him off and then he... Pretty much like, oh, don't you know who I am? And she literally, I don't know who you are. Don't you, don't you recognize me? He slapped her. Uh, so that's technically assault. And I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if they played it down because they could have. And I hate saying it like this, but how he might have actually hit hit her and not slapped her, we don't know. I could see them playing it down just because of who he is, and he's also a man. Yeah. I hate thinking that way. I do feel like the media played it down a little bit. One, he shouldn't have did that. And you can't blame being drunk for doing that. Because you still got drunk. You still went to a convenience store and did that. And yes, you're drunk, but you're still responsible for your actions. Yeah. Yeah. I'm. No matter what kind of situation, if you're conscientious of what's going on or not, you have to take results in your actions mm -hmm. and... This kind of thing, well, I mean, AAA, they have a good fan base, but, you know, it's not as popular as it was, once was, and this is, this is really bad for them. This is really, really bad for mm -hmm. them. Because he's on, uh, what's it called, um, House Arrest, and yeah. if I'm correct, Avix pretty much, you know, halted activities for the group now. Yeah, they due to this, they they canceled the tour that he was supposed to be on, and that's a big deal. I mean, that that helps promote them and their career. So them canceling a tour is a very big deal and can reduce their popularity. 
and there's other singers that if they have a controversy, Avix has done this in the past. I will, or not very often that they cancel a tour, but they've canceled promotion for tours. And mm. that's even hurt people's popularity. Like Kodakumi got a promotion for a tour canceled because of something she said on a talk show. Yeah, for Kingdom, yeah. Yep. And that hurt her popularity. I felt like it really did dip. And But canceling a whole tour is bad. And also think about a lot of women who a lot of them might think, I don't want to go there now because of what he did. That was a jerk thing to do. He shouldn't have done that. So there's some women who might take that perspective and might not want anything to do with it. There's some fans who might be like, oh, no, it doesn't matter. I still love them as a group. So you're mm. going to be hitting with both bases there. And it that, that's why, you know, when you go out in public, especially drunk, which I to be that conscience about it and even say, you know who I am and hit on a girl and remember a lot of that and then hit her. You wonder how drunk they really, really were. I don't know. Yeah, It doesn't really help that, you know, a he's the leader of the group, too. Yep. But he's so, supposed to set the example. Yeah. Of what went on here. And it's just this whole thing spiraled out of control real fast. I th I believe it was like it happened on Friday and everything got resolved by the Monday. Yep. Because they just wanted to nip this in the butt as fast as humanly mm -hmm. possible. Oh, yeah. They wanted to try to get the, keep this quiet and slip it under the rug and hope people forget about it and just get it done fast. Exactly. Exactly. And I mean, I don't blame Avix for that because that looks bad on them too because he's part of their label. He's representing that company. So that makes not only them look bad, it makes the group look bad. It kind of shows what a person he is. And I really did like his voice and I, I enjoy Triple A's music. It disappoints me as a person too of when you see those types of personalities come out. And I and I don't care if people say oh, he was drunk, he couldn't help it. Mm, you still have that... that somewhat of a choice to go out in public drunk. Just saying. Yeah, From it... personal perspective, I've done some stupid shit. But most of it, I've remembered what I've done for all the stupid shit. I'm thinking, why did I do that? But I didn't do anything that bad. I've done some yeah, dumb stuff. I've, I, I've done stuff of questionable manner too but you know the thing is i own up to those mistakes yep oh no i've admitted what. it i've admitted I'm... I'm like i messed up you know i can recall several i'm not going to go over one of them i've been joking about lately is i'm cleaning up my old house and there's a stain in the carpet and it reminds me of something dumb i really did <laughs> Let's put it that way yeah, but it's but... owning up your actions admitting you were at fault and i feel like he was denying these allegations Oh, Which, yeah. I feel like you're not owning up to what you did. Just ad admit it, apologize, and move on. Because people will respect that more. Yeah. No, and if she that's... and she didn't know who he was, she's not going to lie about he did that. So, that's the other thing. I, you know, that, that poor girl is like, well, I'm never going to be a fan of them now. Yeah. I'm sure she thinks that now. No, exactly. Exactly. It's, it's just, it's just a shame of everything that happened. It is, and it's not fair for the other members of the group, as it just not only affects him, it affects everyone. So, it's really disappointing, and I'm sure there might be more to come later, because if he do when he does get off house arrest and come back, I'm wondering to see if he'll still be in the group, or they're somehow gonna try to do a side, a side thing without him. Honestly, I, I think that he... His his career is done. <laughs> yeah. These kind of things. These kind of things you cannot you cannot come back from much, very easily. I mean, it's one thing where you know, like with Kotokumi, where she just accidentally slipped something. This is like straight up. You you put your hands on another person. You probably scarred that person. Yep. And and that's a that's a big deal. And you really can't. You can't bounce back from that. So I can see him, them somehow leaving him out of the group and continuing activities without him. Yeah. I don't know if they'll find a replacement or if they're just going to find a way around it. But I think time will tell. And Avix is probably thinking about what they're going to do. 
if I were them, I as soon as I heard that news, I would already be spinning in my head. What would I? What would I do to fix this? Oh yeah. No, if if I was, especially if I was their manager or the people that are in charge, I I don't know how they're gonna spend this. It's either he is on a definite hiatus, or you know he he's he gets kicked out or something. I'm yeah. I just don't know. I can see starting with an indefinite hiatus until they know further what to do and see maybe how more the public and the fans react. It's all, all in all, it's it's bad. It's bad for the music industry in general. I mean, like, the the American music industry, industry ain't so honest about this kind of stuff, too. But, you know, it's owning up to it that's the most important thing. But, yeah, I wanted to pick your brain for that because mostly me and you kind of know more about AAA than what Grey does. There's another piece of news that I would like to talk about, but I don't think you'll be much more interested about that. That's that NGT stuff where they, they supposedly all graduated, and during the graduation concert, like, none of the other members came. It was only, like, three or four of them. Oh, wow. That's that's sad. That's really sad and kind of shows where the where the group ended up i don't know i don't really know how much to say about this i feel like i don't know enough about ngt to make any comments or anything but i feel like the whole scandal is having a huge effect on the industry in general as you can see with this group for example oh man this 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 is another thing that's spiraled out of control and i i can see that the idol industry is getting a much 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 well-deserved reboot and look over overhaul because of this it's it's so stupid i honestly i honestly just don't believe this yeah it's interesting it's it's something i never thought i'd see right now i thought maybe years down the line but it really just came out of nowhere i guess and it, mm. you're right, it spiraled out of control and it made big news and it's still making news because of everything that's continuously going on with it. And I think it will continue to go on for a while. But yeah, I, I just wanted to pick your brain about these couple things because the last couple of weeks we've been t- tight on time so we haven't been able to talk about this a little bit more. And I wanted to hear mostly your your aspect of it like i said gray isn't as much as into triple a as or at, at least knowledgeable of triple a as we are so it'd be interested to have heard another person's saying on this and, and i i was a big fan of them back in the day and i actually like udata and aoya he did the song he did with the ayumi it was really really good dream on and the song he did with May J was amazing. So it's really sad to hear this and see what's going on. Oh, but yeah. <laughs> with that, let's continue on to the news. Let's do our usual release news first. And right, that so begins with you. I get to start. Woo! Whoa. Uh, so I'm excited about this because I love her. So Miwa is coming out with her latest Blu-ray and showing why she is the best. And those of you who don't know, she is a pop a Japanese vocalist and guitarist. And this new best tour will be released in Blu-ray and DVD, which will come with a bonus CD. It comes out on June 26th. And I'm excited about this, as it's pretty much her tour that she did for her best album she released last year. Um, you can read more information about it on our website and check out the covers. The track listing has not been released yet, but as soon as it is, you know we'll post it because I am excited to see what track she'll do. But it will come with a uh, documentary on there as a bonus, along with a CD of 12 selected tracks, and it will feature her two-day concert at Budokan. But you can pre-order your copy on CD Japan if you check out our website. It's already up. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to this, too, because, you know, Miwa Miwa has been in the business for such a long time, so I'm kind of, I'm very anxious to hear, hear it all. <laughs> I, I, I know, I'm glad she has this one compilation of, like, all her songs, which she's really good about doing for most of her tours anyway. She always picks songs from a variety of her career, which I love. And she is amazing live. I love seeing her play the guitar and sing. She's adorable and extremely talented. 
Nice, nice. So the next is Skypey soars with their second album and third single. Skypiece or Skypiece is a two member popular YouTube unit which consists of Teokun and Ini. And they have announced that they're going to be coming out with a second album and it is titled B Boy. And they're also releasing a third single, which will be Ride or Die, and that'll be used as the ending theme to the popular anime Boruto, Naruto, Next Generations, which you can read about the description of that on our website. B-Boy, their second album, will come in three editions, a limited Sky edition, limited Peace edition, and a regular edition, which you can pre-order on our website and check out the... I don't think the track listing is out just yet... And then Ride or Die will only come in a CD. It'll be a CD-only edition, and it's called a 500 yen one-coin edition because it only consists of one song. Wow. And that will have, like, the, you know, the anime cover of Boruto on there. But you're welcome to pre-order both those on our website. You can also check out their latest music video called Sky Flight. And you can see why they're so talented. Also, check out... They have a YouTube channel, and they, they actually kind of go between each other and have segments i watched several of their videos and they're a lot of fun so <laughs> i highly recommend checking them out i can totally see why they're really popular you know i'm, I'm actually interested in this on the anime side because i kind of keep up with boruto so it, it, it'd be excited to hear a new theme song i'm always hyped when i hear a new theme song and hopefully it matches with the season that's all i can ask <laughs> The funny thing is, is that's the one anime I didn't keep up with, but I loved the music to Naruto and Boruto. But yeah. <laughs> I, I just didn't keep up with it, but it always had really good music. They always pick amazing artists, so I'm, yeah. I'm excited to hear this one. Oh, actually, I, I heard little bits of it. They teased it on their YouTube channel, but not enough. I not want enough, more. Enough. <laughs> it's always how it is, right? Yes. Continuing on... Popular model and actress Sedina Motola, and she announced that she will be making her far way into the music industry with her first single called Ikareta Baby, dropping on July 3rd. And unfortunately, it would only be available on 12 inch vinyl. That's awesome. I yeah, want I'm it actually, just because I, it's I, a vinyl. I really want it to. You know, this is actually probably one of my favorite songs. It was originally covered by the popular, like, math band Fishman back in the day. Mm -hmm. And, you know, her growing up in that era when this song was released, she fell in love with the vocals and the lyrics, and it compelled her to mostly have this song be her first song because she just fell in love with that song so much. You can find out more info about it on our site and you can actually pre-order the 12 inch vinyl however it's only available on hmv records so if you guys want to cost uh, pay a little bit more for the middleman transaction you might have to so years ago hmv before lawson purchased them used to be able to ship to the u.s because i had to count an hmv unfortunately when they switched over i lost my account and I can no, I don't think I can ship to the U.S. anymore. I haven't tried, but my account's gone. And I think I got to create a new one via Lawson. So I lost all my points. <laughs> oh, man, that sucks. Yeah, I didn't buy too much off there, but HMV had really cool exclusives. And I'm, mm. I'm so upset that they have this. And if you do need to go through a middleman, check out which one do I use? Mm, why, uh, Tenso. Tenso is really good. Tenso yeah. is really good. I use that a lot, especially for my Kodakubi fan club, so they're they're decent. But yeah, I, I'm interested. I'll be going to Japan around the same time that this will be released, so I'm probably going to pick this up. Yeah, depending on how much it is, I might try to have you pick me up a copy I've gotten back <laughs> in the vinyls. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I've Unfortunately, because of doing this podcast and listening to the type of music that I do listen to now, a lot of these artists release stuff on vinyl a whole lot. Like, Syrup releases a lot of stuff. He released his first two mini-albums on vinyl as a collaboration with Levi. So it has a nice-ass cover plus a slip a slip case cover that is embroidered with Levy jeans. 
Oh, so. that's awesome. That's awesome. Um, as soon as I saw the covers for those, I'm like, freak, I want to buy them so bad. Yeah, there's a couple. Like, a lot of the R&B singers did vinyls, like Double and M-Flow. And I want those vinyls. I saw a couple when I was in Japan, and I kicked myself for not buying them at the time. It's funny because, you know, the the way the Japanese music industry goes now, they're doing a lot of really interesting things of their releases, and besides just doing digital and, and regular uh, compact. Mm-hmm. They've been doing a lot of vinyl releases now. They've been doing cassette tape releases also, mm-hmm. which, like, for me, I'm like, Jesus Christ, I need to go buy a cassette tape now <laughs> for, like, a lot of these bands. Like, Kudadin, they released their new single only on this cassette tape. I bought it when I was in Japan last year. However, because I don't have a cassette tape player, I'm just like, I haven't been able to listen to this. <laughs> I might have one, but I don't know if it still works. We have an old CD player with a cassette tape player in it. And when I've been cleaning, I found all these old cassettes. Mm. And I'm like, I really need to find... Actually, my karaoke machine might have a a cassette player in it because I got that No. 2. (laughs) Yes, I found that. It's an MTV karaoke machine. I think it has a cassette player still. I need to look. But I love that idea. They're trying to bring the older media back, and I love that. I wish more people did that. Because Japan knows they have people who will buy it, who are collectors, and who love that base. I love that they're doing something different. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I am I really do like it. Granted, you know, I really do like the digital stuff. But, you know, these kind of feeling stuffs, like really good music stuff, you cannot be having, having stuff on like vinyl and, and stuff like that. Because they require a different type of sound. And mm-hmm. the sound that they have is... It could be radically different compared to it being on CD. I agree. I completely agree. I think I we have several vinyls, more movie soundtracks, but there's a difference, and you can tell. And that's one thing that makes me want to go back when I go there and pick up some more vinyls. There's a lot of ones I want to pick up on vinyl. But yeah, continuing on, singer and songwriter Kimura Kaida announced that she will be bringing out a new album called Ichigo, releasing on July 31st. This will be her latest full album since her album Punky, back in October of 2016, and will be used to commemorate her 15th year in the music industry. I didn't know that she hasn't been releasing that stuff that long, because I just went to go see her in concert. In a live event, like, I want to say several months back, back in January. I'm very excited for this. I'm looking forward to this very, very much so. But not only did she announce the release for her album, she also announced that she'll be having a debut anniversary date concert, simply titled Go Go Kaede Land. 2019 15-year anniversary in the lovely open-air concert hall in Hibiya in Tokyo on June 23rd. You can find more information on our site along with the pre-orders for Colors or for Ichigo on our site. I'm excited about this as well. I didn't really she I forgot she's been in the music industry for 15 years. It's amazing. And I think this is a great way to kick it off. Oh yeah, definitely. Definitely. So the next one is, so Dirt and Grey, which is a veteran five-member rock metal band, or metal, I don't know how to describe, because they're metal, but they're also, I'm trying to think of how, what kind of rock besides metal I would describe them as, because I feel like they've gone through several changes over the years. <laughs> yeah. So they announced that they're going to be releasing a new live Blu-ray, uh, Blu-ray and DVD collection concert. And this will be the first release they've done in over three years. And the, this release is extremely unique as it's pretty much going to be a collection of live concerts from several, from their From Depression to Blank mode of 16, 17 tour. So it takes live clips from that whole tour from different places they've been. And it's pretty much 18 selected songs performed at the seven different concerts they did on their national tour and it puts it all into one blu-ray so i kind of like that because they're picking the best ones they did or maybe the the ones that are memorable for them so i think that's actually pretty cool and 
as a bonus, the concert also feature a song performed at their tour 14, Psycho Connect, Mauve of Gauze. And that brings it, so there'll be 19 live songs on there. And you can check out the track listing for the whole tour on there. And they got some, re- they got a really, really good set list. And the Blu-ray and DVD are really good prices for concerts. The Blu-ray is only 3,900 yen, which is about 35 to 39 USD. That's cheap for a Japanese Blu-ray. They're usually $70 plus or about 60 <laughs> oh, to $70 plus. So the price they have it for is a great price. And Duran Gray is awesome live. So this is a really unique set. And I probably didn't say when this is going to come out, did I? August 7th, this will be released. <laughs> so you have time to pre-order your copy. And you can do that on our website. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this because it's been a hot minute since I've actually heard from anything from Duran Gray in a long time. So I'll be kind of looking forward to how this sells. I'll just look for it from afar. It'd be interesting, nonetheless, to see how it does. Mm-hmm. I agree. But yeah. Continuing on, member of popular idol group Nikigo from the popular idol group Nikigo, Kaede, announced that she will be releasing a brand new mini album, lengthily titled Shinya Anata wa Kyo no Furi Kaede Mata Ashita no Asa Made. On June 18th, this comes after the very successful release of her solo single, Cloud9, which was released this past week. You can see more information about the mini-album on our site, but, you know, I'm kind of looking forward to this. And since kind of Nikki Go kind of just died all of a sudden this past year, I'm kind of anxious to see if any of the other members will be doing solo stuff too. But yeah, you can pre-order everything on our site and look at the lovely m- music clip of cloud nine on our site also i think this will be very interesting as well to see how she does i'm excited to see her go solo so next up is riri is ready for summer with her newest ep and those of you who don't know riri is a japanese r&b pop vocalist and rising star she she's newer to the industry than most and she is definitely getting me ready for the summer, I can tell you that, is her newest EP, Summertime, will be released on May 22nd, and this will be her third mini-album overall, but first under a major label. So I'm excited to see how this will do, and it'll have five tracks on here, three will be original songs on here, one will be a remix of her hit song, Rush, and the other will be a cover of the pop the western r&b song or pop song by nelly and kelly rowland called dilemma which i think most of us know that song because i can tell you i can do karaoke to that song all day (laughs) Um, i'm very excited to to hear the cover of this because i love dilemma and i want to i think riri could definitely pull it off with her vocals and the digital song Love Love featuring Juno Flow will also be included on this. And you can grab your copy on our website and pre-order. And you can also check out a video for giving a snippet of color uh, summertime. And it's the photo session and behind the scene of it, which I think is really interesting. And I'm excited for this. Is I, I, oh, I love hearing what she's going to do. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm actually looking forward to this because... Well, a little bit of spoiler for later on. Listening to a couple of her music actually turned her on to a style that I'm, I'm somewhat interested in. I'll be just looking afar from this. But the EP is going to be an interesting step. And I'm pretty sure the label that she's with, we won't say because... Uh, <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> well, It'll, she'll garner an audience, a very Western style audience. And I'll talk more about this later, yes. but I'm looking forward to this nonetheless. Mm-hmm. Next one is actually an article that Gray did, and she, it is about the lovely anime Lisa s- singer that she'll be dropping a brand new single on July 3rd titled Gurenge. And the announcement came out of her. Live is Smile Always 364 Joker, one woman live po- concert that happened this past weekend. In typical fashion, it will be used for the opening for the anime Demon Slayer Kimetsu no Yabai. 
and which is a fantasy anime if you guys don't know and I'll have various amount of editions with a standard edition a limited plus C the DVD edition and an anime version oh a limited press edition I'm actually looking forward to this <laughs> so but the limited uh, press edition will include both the the TV size version of the anime or the song and uh, several other features you can pre-order everything on our site and check out the song I'm excited about this so I do like anime Lisa she has an amazing voice and very unique and there's so many theme songs I immediately recognize her with and I can't wait to I cannot wait to hear the full single of this because I really did like what I heard of uh, Guru Renge so I I really want that limited edition I love her limiteds. They're beautiful. Yeah. I'm I'm looking forward to it also. It it sounds really nice from what we've listened to so far. But mm -hmm. next up, a popular virtual YouTuber. Oh, I forgot how we decided to name her. Aziki? Aziki? Az Aziki? 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 I say Aziki. <laughs> Aski. Okay, well, we'll do this. <laughs> Aski. She dropped the music video for her double release track, Fake, 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 and Inochi on her official YouTube channel. We previously reported that you could uh, purchase these, these double singles, but now that the release date came past this past week, uh, she dropped the, the YouTube uh, versions for both of the tracks. I'm actually really liking Fake, Fake, Fake. <laughs> I second that. And I really, really like Fake, Fake, Fake. And we also previously announced that she'll be having her first live performance called Aski's First Live, The Shittiest sh <laughs> the shittiest Start on May 19th in the lovely Akiba NS building. If, if you guys don't know where that is, it's like the main building right across the station. But she dropped both the timetable for the uh, for the the venue along with all the goods that you can buy which you can see more on our site i wish but i yeah. could be there for this that would be <laughs> yeah. amazing it it'd be amazing and it already passed but i'm pretty sure they already have highlights about it she also did this lovely lovely like song roulette thing where she just did all of her songs back to back to back all eight of her songs so it's, it's interesting nonetheless but yeah, you can buy this song, it's Fake 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 and Inochi, on our site, along with the music videos in question. And next up is the fresh-faced female vocalist, Adia Miyakawa, announced that she will be releasing her mini-debut album called Smahon He o Mukai no Shikai on June 26. If you guys don't know who she is, she is the sister of popular YouTuber Mia Kawakun, which we have talked previously about. She'll be partnering with private labor Nim Records for her first foray in the music industry. You can see more information about this album on our tr on our site and you can pre-order it on the links on our site also it will release with both a standard cd only edition and a cd plus dvd limited edition which will include clips from her one woman live event which took back place back in april looking forward to checking her out yeah she has like this weird psychedelic thing it's interesting to say the least <laughs> i like that kind of thing uh i was a bit i'm still a big fan of maa M -A -A, ma and she has yeah. this really, really weird style, and I love it so much. But yeah. Vocalist Yuki Akira dropped the music video for her upcoming track, Birthday, on her official YouTube channel. Birthday, which will be a part of the single Tanjo Birthday, which will be released on June 5th. This will be her first major label debut with Speedstar Records. It's part of JVC. Oh, JVC really? JVC Music, yeah. Wow. So it's a sub. It's a sub label of JVC. So I'm, it's interesting. Uh, she has a fairly mellow, naturistic style, and I kind of like that. So 
it's it, it's interesting. She she's she has that Miwa style where it's just her and a guitar kind of thing. The single will have two different editions: a CD only standard and a CD plus DVD limited edition, which includes clips from her One Woman Live, which took place back in October. You can check out the music video on our site and pre-order the single on our site also. Okay, and continuing on is another one of Gray's is the anti-establishment six-member idol group bish released the music video for their new mini album carrots which drops digitally today actually as we are talking about it (laughs) the music video is for the song i am me and will feature popular model and actress makoto tanaka who has also worked with the group before back in 2017 with their song promise of the star and as previously announced both carrots it will be paired with the other mini album called sticks which was released back in april and will have a compilation of a full album called carrot and sticks which will release in july i believe if i'm remembering july 3rd yes 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 july 3rd and it'll have a lovely edition. So it'll have like two CDs and all these these lovely, lovely things, which you can see more on our site. You can actually see the lovely, lovely CDs for Carrot and Sticks. And I do like the artwork for Sticks better than Carrots. I do too. <laughs> I love the artwork for Sticks. It is so badass. Sorry, yeah. Gray. I'm dropping <laughs> all today. <laughs> yeah. I love the artwork for Sticks. I wish if that could be the artwork for both because it's amazing. Yes, yes, yes. The light and the dark. The dark is really, really good. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you can pre-order all the amazing <laughs> mini albums and the full album on our site and check out the music video while you're at it for I Am Me while you're there. And going on up, as we previously talked about uh, with Adia Miyakawa, his big, her big brother Miyakawa Kun announced that he will be teaming up with vocalist Takuto again, and be making a brand new vocal unit called Only This Time. And they will release a debut single called Answer, which will also drop on July third. Answer, which is going to be, come the new opening theme song for the long-running detective anime Detective Conan, which will start being used as the opening on June first. If you haven't heard what this pair sound like, this isn't the first time they paired up together as they paired up with the song Kamikaze Express, which just ironically was used for the ending theme of the same anime early last year. The song is written and composed by Miyakawa himself, and you can check out a lovely, lovely assortment of the lovely news and release dates and very special editions for the single on our site. They also announced that they'll be having a live tour also starting from June 1st to July 7th, which you can check more out on our site. I like the fact that they're going really all in with this. (laughs) They are. I mean, holy cow, that's pretty dang amazing. That's a lot. Yeah, that is a lot. But yeah, you can check out their first foray of the pairing in Kamikaze Express on our site. But I'm kind of excited, you know, they have that style. Well, the Kamikaze Express has that style that would be used for Conan, honestly. <laughs> very electronica bass and very Euro beat heavy reminder mm-hmm. of what the songs were in the 90s. Yep. And lastly, once again, it is another one of Gray's articles, and you can probably tell why. <laughs> um, Maju Adi, the former member of the popular idol group Little Glee Monster, announced that she will be formally returning to the stage, however, as a single act this time around. If you guys don't know, she left the group back in 2017 in order to kind of rest herself from the limelight because. You know, being an idol is a lot of hard work. Mm-hmm. I can, oh, yeah. I can, I can understand that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that if she wants to, you know, relax, so to speak, for a bit. 
she's making sure that she'll be coming back in a big way first by having her first official twitter account which you can follow on through the site and the youtube channel which she also already had teased along with some several new songs you can see the preview video at on our site she also announced that she will be having a one woman live in tokyo at the dual magic exchange which holds a special meaning to her because this is the first place where Little Glee Monster held their first one woman live also. But yeah, you can see the lovely trailer on our site and look forward to her release. I look forward to it. Little Glee Monster has amazing vocals, so I'm looking forward to her going solo and hearing what she does on her own. Oh yeah, it'd be amazing nonetheless. That's it for release news. Let's go kick it into actual news here. And first is Sakana Action gives us a small sneak peek of what to expect for their latest album. Unfortunately, they previously announced that they will be delaying their album 834.194 to June 19th. However, as a small favor to the fans, they uploaded a teaser for the Sakana 10 year anniversary concert event on their YouTube channel. If you guys don't know, that will be included on every Blu ray and DVD edition of the album. The event took place back in May of 2017 and featured the top requested songs that they've did so far back, out, back then and totaled to about 130 minutes. So a free to our live for people who have been patiently waiting for this album. That's amazing. I like the little preview. It's like a good eight minute preview or two. But yeah, they also released the jacket covers for it, which is done by modern Japanese artist Nur Hall, which you can see on our site. You can also pre-order all the lovely editions on our site, along with the teaser on our site, which you can see below. I love the covers, the little previews they have on there. The jackets are amazing. They're really cool. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. If I could have an actual, like, artwork work piece, that'd be pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Oh, I completely agree. So, yeah. Lastly, it is the lovely, lovely band bandmade after the release of their four single glory they announced that they will be commencing a european world tour called gekido which will run from june 22nd to june 26 partnering with live nation they hope that they will make their mark in the european market by visiting four different cities across three countries all the members are excited for this collaboration and hope to get the most out of this tour they will be visiting England, France, and Germany for those who are interested. If you guys want a more clear tour list, you can see on our site. I'm actually very, very excited for this. <laughs> I am too. And I know this tour is going to do really well and possibly sell out. When they went to England years ago, they did a giant arena tour and it sold very well. So this is a big step for them, and I'm very, very excited for them and see what more more becomes. I wish if I could go, though. <laughs> yeah, me too, me too. But yeah, with that, I believe it is our music corner time, and this week, you took the reins. I did. Name, this so. is my first music corner that I'm actually here for. <laughs> yeah. So as we as we know, the last couple one, the last one I did, I missed. So I actually get to be here. <laughs> so I chose Riri, and I'm gonna do a little background on Riri. So she is a I would say Japanese R and B pop singer, is her music style, and more what on the Western side. So she got her start in the music industry in 2011 when she became a finalist on the program Next Star, Generation Star, which is an audition show hosted by David Foster, a famous music producer. In 2012, she performed in New York for the first time at the Dream Support Project, and she got to meet her idol, Japanese R&B singer Ai. I'm a huge fan of Ai 
story is probably one of my favorite songs and to this day when I hear it it brings tears to my eyes because it's such a beautiful song I has been a you know a big thing in the Japanese music industry so I can see why Riri you know that's her idol and you know probably mean the world to meeting her so in 2016 Riri actually got her career started professionally with I's record label Micaholic Inc with I as her producer and mentor in 2017 Sony Music Japan signed Riri and she got to release her first debut album with entitled <laughs> her name Riri. Uh, Sony. <laughs> and you know, I will say this. I, I do rip on Sony a little bit just because I get upset because you can't get a lot of their music. The one thing is you can at least get a lot of Riri's music that she has released with them, which makes me happy. And I'm glad that they have done that especially her type of music appeal and i think sony for her is trying to reach an international audience or at least feels like she can i also think riri probably played a big part in this as from what i've heard when some artists want to become international they do have to really push for it and i know by she she really wants a start and be a world singer and I'll get into that in a little bit, but I have a feeling she definitely pushed Sony to make sure she's available internationally. Um, so her style incorporates the use of R&B and pop tunes with a very Western style. And you can definitely hear that in her music. She has extremely powerful vocals, especially for her young age. She started, she actually got her start when she was probably 2016. She was 16 years old. Because that was in 2016, you know, she professionally and she got signed with I, so she was young. And when she released Rush in 2017, I mean, she was 17 years old. Now she's 19. I mean, her vocals are amazing. And hearing that power in there, I mean, her vocal ability far precedes her years. And, and like I said, in Rush, you hear the power in her voice. And that is a song that it her voice mixed with the r&b style of it plus her use of english it definitely appeals to a high school and early college audience by the songs it's a it's talking about when you get that rush when you actually see the person you really really like you know and you get that feeling inside of you and you can hear everything in her voice she portrays the song amazingly and her song Honey is also a very westernized style. It's more of a mid-tempo R&B pop song. Something you would hear in the radio in the U.S. So you definitely get the style she is going for in her music. And she's had several releases over the years. And you can tell she's not stopping now. In an interview with music producers while performing for auditions, she did a hard rock cafe audition which is really neat in the u.s with several music producers and there's a little documentary on her youtube page which you should check out on our website and she actually they interview her and you get to hear her auditions and you get to see where she goes it is a really interesting documentary as she discusses that one of her goals is to bring her music to the world and to win a grammy and she says that to the producer she's like i want to win a grammy and there's no doubt she's going to do it one day because her voice and her style fits very, very well here. She currently has two EPs, which one was released in 2016, which was I Love to Sing. And then Rush was in 2017. And then she has two studio albums that were both released in 2018, Riri and Neo. Neo came out in November of last year. And now she has her new EP, which we discussed earlier, dropping May 22nd where she collaborated with the rapper Juno Flow and her latest song, Love Love. So I'm really excited to see more what she does, especially for her new release, Summertime. As you can tell, her music started off a mixture of R&B pop, and some songs are a little more Western pop, some are more R&B pop. And I really, I'm interested because her vocals are amazing, and I want to see what she's going to do with her voice. Yeah, I'm... That... That was one of the major things that I was very surprised at by her. That, you know, she has this very, very ambitious goal of winning a Grammy. Which, you know, with her, her 
very very western style of influences and music style i can very easily see becoming very very popular and i can't wait to see what the future has in store for her because of this I, I do too, and we we have Rush available on our website, but I will say a couple other songs that her voice really stands out is um, That's My Baby. You can really, really hear her voice in that too, and I, I really can't wait. I also like the Western incorporation in her music, and I'm very curious to see how that does in Japan, because for example, they love Ariana Grande. I've only maybe heard one song by her, and, you know, I'm hoping Japan will also love Riri, and I think the U.S. would love her as well. Yeah, I'm I'm excited. I'm very, very excited to see what the future has in store for her. And because she has such a very, very small music career professionally, it can only grow from here, honestly. I completely agree. So. But yeah, thank you. Thank you for introducing this. You know, I it's very, very Western. If you guys really like that Western R&B style, you will love, love Riri. Yes. Uh, yes, I completely agree. And I, re- I occasionally like the Western style, but she makes it work. Like, she really does a good job and makes me say hey if she was in the radio i might actually turn it on again it's interesting because you know personally i don't like this western style and there's only one song that kind of stuck out with me and that was i believe it was honey but rush is an amazing song i love that song to death if if i were to randomly hear it i wouldn't switch the radio i I would just kind of go with it (laughs) so to speak Mm -hmm. yeah uh, thank you for introducing to her to us and i'm actually looking forward to picking up that album now i'm kind of wanting to get that (laughs) i I actually have all her stuff and i've actually got her albums on order because i fell in love with her voice i i couldn't help it i had to (laughs) but (laughs) you can check out more on her twitter instagram and official website which we have in our music corner link along with her video rush I highly recommend men following her on Instagram. She is adorable, and I love following her activities and what she does. But yeah, with that, let's continue on to the Oricon. This this week is a lovely, lovely thing here. I don't know. Which, over the last couple of weeks, I think I've enjoyed last week the best. I think so, too, because this week was very... Eh... It it was interesting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was interesting. What can you say? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. So yeah, starting off with number ten, it is it is Kasodo ni Saku by X O X. And you know it's interesting because I legit thought they were Korean this entire time, but now they're they are. Danger number one danger boy group. That's what their their tagline is. <laughs> Interesting. I honestly thought they were in a way I thought they were Korean by their photo and the, the cover. I thought they were Korean. When yeah. I heard them sing, I thought maybe they could be Japanese because their I guess you could say how the language was so smooth, there was no choppiness. Mm. And the accent was way 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 too good no offense to you know the korean singers who do an amazing job in japanese music industry i had a feeling listening to them without looking at them they were japanese because i listened to them before i looked at them but i was wondering japanese group is doing a very very heavy korean influence type of song that's what it felt like to me no no i agree with you 100 percent, luna it's Sounds very, very Korean influence. And if you watch the music video, they are very Korean influence regardless because they look, they look the part. They look the part immensely. <laughs> yep. I looked down while I was driving and I'm like, oh, this is surprising. Because I, I, so wink, wink, I should, don't ever do this. Don't drive and watch videos on your phone, which I was not doing. 
but at stoplights I was looking down. But I had the Oricon playing while I was driving, so on YouTube. <laughs> Hope no cops are listening. Um, but yeah, I looked down. I'm like, oh well, this takes a little turn. I'm a little confused. And I had a second glance because of their name. It's like X O X. And first I thought it was the Korean group E X O. I'm like, that's not them. It they remind me a little bit of them. <laughs> so I honestly didn't know what to think of this song. I was a little indifferent. It sounds like they were trying too hard, in my opinion. <laughs> yep, that's how I felt. I, I just, I couldn't really get into it. I was very disappointed, especially I'm like, is this EXO? If it is, this is not good for them. Then I looked down, oh, it's not EXO. <laughs> like, that's why. <laughs> so, yeah, I, w- I wasn't a big fan, unfortunately. It just felt too generic and that they were trying to be something they're not. Yeah, I, yeah, that. This could be just one small hiccup in the road, but yeah, I don't know why. This this rubbed me off the wrong way. Like they're trying way too hard for this single. I I think so too. And I I will I hope they do appear in Oricon again so we can give them a chance and hear some of their other songs. I don't want to make my judgment on one song yet, but I am interested to see what else they'll do especially after watching this. I'm I'm interested to see what they're going to release because if they're going to just keep on doing this, I don't see them lasting all too much, to be per- perfectly honest. Yep. But yeah, this week it sold a lovely 12,076 points. And going on up, first and foremost, I won. <laughs> to number I, nine. <laughs> yeah, I was going to bet with you on that just because I already knew it was going to appear. It's done so well, it's not dropping off just yet. Yeah, and that is Marigold by Amyong. It it hung on there, and sure enough, we were like, ah, watch it screw us both and be on the the singles next week. But it, that it did. It's a great song, and like I said, I love this song. Both this song and Haru no He, which we'll talk about later, spoilers there, mm-hmm. is amazing, and I can't wait to see more. I can't wait to see more of her career. I, 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 I... I agree 100%. I'm so glad she's still on here. She deserves every bit of this. Her These two songs are my top favorites. Yep, yep, yep. But, yeah, this week it sold a lovely 12,458 points. And going on up it is Asuheno Brave by MS Project. I did not know how to feel about this. <laughs> I didn't either. I... I was had really mixed emotions. This was another one I was watching while driving, and the first thing I thought, is this an anime theme? What yeah, anime is this I, used for? I, I originally thought that... Yeah. Oh, I don't think it's used for an anime. I'm confused. Yeah, I I have no idea. This This is such an interesting group, but this is super anime. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's super anime, and you can kind of tell. Just by listening to the sound. With this song and then the next song we're going to talk about, I could see it this being part of a, 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 a tank anime or being part of Girls on Panzer or something like that. I don't know. Oh my god, I love Girls I love girls in Panzer. But I can't yeah, see you know, this song being on there. But I love Girls <laughs> in Panzer. It's funny because there's a song called M- MSS Panzer on this single. <laughs> it doesn't fit the style of the show, though. Their vocals yeah, don't. Yeah. This... this type of single doesn't but the, yeah the title makes it it's very interesting i just i really don't maybe they're anime influenced or video game influenced and looking at the t- like how the cover looks you kind of get that vibe or maybe yeah, theater I, maybe they're like an anime theater type thing maybe maybe it's it's interesting to say the least and mm-hmm. they seem geared for the war <laughs> but yeah Asuhe no Brave sold a lovely 15,674 points. And going on up, it's number seven with Kyun 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 no Dashte. Ugh, you already know how I feel about this about last week. Every time if I hear this, I hear Lady Lady Go. <laughs> and, then I, and, then I'm, and then if I hear Lady Go, I hear Kyun 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 no Dashte. I'm like, go, 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 go. that's how I feel. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm going to strangle someone. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I'm going to be very far away if I ever play the song in front of you then. <laughs> I'm sorry. It ruined it for me. Gray ruined the song for me because now I hear Lady Go and I love Lady Go. So I can't unhear this ever again. <laughs> <laughs> you hear that, Gray? 
<laughs> I'm sure he hears it. And he's like, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. But yeah, you, yeah, you know, Hinata Zaka 46 came out with a big hit with this. And I'm I'm happy with that. But, you know, this song, God, I can't. <laughs> But yeah, it sold a lovely 16,330 points here this week. And going on up to number six is How Do Know He by I'm Young. I'm Young. Like I'm you young. said, amazing song by I'm Young. By I'm Young. Yeah, it's it's really good. Her vocals really carry on this song, and it's it's so good. It's so good. Yes, agree 100%. I, it's amazing. Yeah, and this week it sold a lovely 17,304 points. And continuing on up, it is Gurenji by Lisa. We've recently talked about this. I guess they she dropped it digitally because I can only see the digital marks on here. So I guess she dropped it digitally right after the concert. And that's very impressive for it to have only started on Thursday in place fifth on the oricon for weekly it's damn impressive oh yeah but what what did you feel about the song luna i'm i'm i we kind of talked about it when we did the article but i I don't know (laughs) so i do like it but so lisa has extremely unique vocals which i love my butt comes in because it really reminds me of some of her other anime songs she does, such as Oathsign from Fate Zero. As soon as I heard that, it gave me the Oathsign feeling. And I'm like, oh, oh, I love Oathsign. And I'm like, this is an Oathsign, but it gave me that give me that similar feeling. So that's my only issue with the songs that feels like typical Lisa. But I did like it. I did like it. I think her vocals are really good. But that's my feelings on that. Nice. What did you think? Yeah. Like, how did you feel I, about the song? I feel like you're right. She has done better work in the past. It's it's a good entry in her amazing catalog, non- oh, yeah. nonetheless. But I, I feel like a lot of her other songs are much more stronger than this song. Yes. I feel it wasn't her strongest song. It's a really good song, though. Her voice carries the song. But the, I guess you could say the melody and the theme of the music feels like that could be something that could have done a little better. And that might not even be on her. That might just be on who produced it as well. Because it feels like something we've already heard from her. Vocal wise, though, I think her vocals are done very well. Yeah, I I feel like this song didn't carry her as much as I would have thought. Mm-hmm. But that that's just my opinion. But it sold well regardless, download oh, wise. Yeah. I mean it big time. That's amazing. Yeah. It sold a lovely twenty one thousand eighty four points and you know it's once we see the actual physical release sales for this, I think it'll pop back up again, definitely. Maybe not as strong as it did this past week, but I think it'll pop up again, definitely. And continuing on up to number four, it is Oh No, Oh No, and Haru Urarara by Kobochi Fairies. I, I thought it was Ko, Ko, Kobushi Factory. Factory, there we go. I always confuse with fairies and factory. <laughs> I, I remember seeing it when I, oh, I watched the video because I really liked the song. I the love Oh No. Really good. It was really, really good. Oh No, Oh No is possibly my song of the week, with a close second being number one when we'll get there. But Yeah, it was between this and one were my two ones because this was really good, and I wasn't expecting what I got, and I yeah, loved what c- I got. Because their last release didn't really set the world on fire with us. And, you know, this... This single just took me out of surprise, to be perfectly honest. Because I guess they hint at the later 90s idol stuff and early aughts idol stuff, which I love, actually. And that's what I really do like about this song. It's amazing. And it took me out of my element because I really thought it was going to be a, you know, the typical idol poppy song. 
Mm-hmm. I did too. So and it's it's really good. I, I I really highly recommend you guys to go and listen to it. If you guys are able to. I believe it is available on YouTube, so go it right is ahead. On YouTube. And it's and the video is subtitled. Subbed. It's subbed. That's a good thing for the idol community. The international yes. idol community. Yes. I love that they do that because even though we can understand, like, for example, I can understand a good amount of things, but there's some words I might not know or some grammar I get confused. So this is something, a helpful tool for me too, especially if I don't know it. I love having the subtitles there. And for people who really want to get into Japanese music, especially idol music, it's a great tool to help you learn. So, but this song was nonetheless amazing. And I thought their vocals really, really stuck out in this song. Literally. It was really good. It was amazing. It showed that they have power, and I want to hear more stuff like this. This week it sold a lovely 28,905 points. And going on up, it is Fake Me, Fake Me Out by Da Ice. And this was really good, too. I totally forgot about this, but this was a really good song also. It was really good, so... I really liked it, and I forgot how much I enjoyed the Ice's music. They have amazing yeah. vocals, too. They, they do have amazing vocals, and I was pretty surprised by that. I knew about their dancing skills, because they always, they're they they're one of those kind of idol groups, mm-hmm. male idol groups. But, you know, their vocals were on point with this song. Oh, yeah. Oh, 100%. It, it was... They showed they can... They can not only dance... They have the power in their voices to back it up. Yeah, that is that is damn true with this song to a T. And I'm looking forward to more of it, more of their releases now, more than ever. It's it's quite funny actually. It sold a lovely forty four thousand nine hundred and seventy six points. And going on up to number two, it is Sagase Diamondo Lily. By equals love. Did you find your diamond lily? No. I found I found a bullet lodged into my ears, though. <laughs> I had to say that because Sagase diamond lily means finding diamond lily or find diamond lily, correct? Yes, yes, yes. Sorry, I, I had a fun play on that. If you ever, if you read the article when this is going to be announced, I had so much fun with the puns. <laughs> it's it's funny. It's funny because Equal Love, if you guys don't know, it's it's directed by Sashi, uh, Rino Sashihara of AKB fame. And this is her first direct, uh, more on roles hand since she left the 48 family. Mm-hmm. And in typical fashion, this is a very, very typical idol stuff. And, you know, it sold well. It sold well. And I understand that completely. But I, I don't know. That This for me was kind of just like, it was okay. So I I had a little bit of mixed feelings on this. Because Equal Love, I go half and half on. There's some songs I like. There's some songs I do not like. So Sagasse Diamond Lily, I did feel like it was very typical and forgettable. Which is my issue with it. But at the time, I'm like, I do like this. But it's not a favorite because it's too typical. So, uh, I did feel that the song was a little... I'm trying to think of how to describe this. It... Because I was listening to it in the car. And when it came on, I was... I don't know if I'd say I was surprised or not surprised. I liked the melody a little bit, but at the same time, I felt like I already heard that song before. Hmm. It's this is a I have some mixed feelings on this because in a way I liked it, but I don't know if I'd ever go back and listen to it over and over. Yeah. For for me with this song particularly, it's just the age old time of if do I hear if I hear it on the radio randomly, do I continue listening to it or do I switch the channel? And unfortunately with this song. I'm going to switch the channel. Which is unfortunate for me. 
Because oh. I know Equal Love can do some amazing, amazing work. I know that for a T, but this song, they're trying to do... And I understand, because it's the period of spring and stuff like that, so they want that lovely little feeling, but... I, I don't know. I just... I, 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 I don't know how to feel with this song, <laughs> to say the least. I feel like I, I do want to go back and re-listen to it another time and get another shot. Because when I first listened to it, it was one of the initial more... I brushed it off because the other songs I heard before and after were so much better. Yeah, same, same. Maybe maybe if I just sit down with it, maybe I'll have a, a, a newer appreciation for it. But knowing Gray, I am pretty sure he would love this. <laughs> Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. So. But regardless, it sold very, very well, reaching 100,827 points with this single. And going on up, it is this week's number one, Ame no Chihare by Johnny's West. I loved and, it. And this song was really great. I loved it. Right. This, like put me on a Johnny's West train. I heard this. I immediately fell in love and had to listen to it again. This is the song that this is their strongest song in my opinion. In the 3 or 4 singles that we covered by them, mm-hmm. this is their strongest song. I agree. I I loved this so 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 much. And I mean, this is where Kobushi Factory and the Johnny's Westel came neck and neck because i loved them both but i am actually i actually love the johnny's west one a little bit more it's not high pitch johnny it's very ballad johnny which is the best type of johnny in my opinion and you know that kind of music when johnny's does a lot of good ballad like songs that's what i just love the most by them they can put on an amazing show i i agree 100 percent with that it they showed in this and we had to watch lives due to you know johnny's is still getting on the whole youtube thing and trying to grow a little bit more internationally and their lives are amazing i mean vocal wise like you said they put on a great show and I want to hear more, and I want to buy this single because it was so good. It's it's interesting just to see how their career... I would love to hear how Gray felt about this song because he was, like all of us, we weren't digging Johnny's West all too much, but I think that might change with this song. I think so, too. I think he would enjoy this, and this would probably change his mind. Yeah, so it's an amazing song, nonetheless, and it got me to uh, be on that hype train, so to speak, now. Yep. But yeah, it sold an amazing 159,387 points, with it only being CD only, because that's how Johnny's works. Yep. I mean, they but, can sell. They sell CDs. Yeah, they can sell. And with that, let's go peer over to the lovely album side. Oh, wow. And, I know what killed it. <laughs> yeah, now I know why everything probably died after that. It's because Kiss My Feet 2 released their album, Free Hugs. And that killed everything with 200,000 copies there. And that was physical mm. CDs, too. That is yep. just amazing. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Only physical releases because Johnny's. And yeah, I mean, that's of king uh, keynote that I can see here. Got Nagizaka's 46 album also. Twice his mini album also charted. So, but yeah, nothing of much that I, I see. It's the usual. But that Free Hugs one just killed everything, though. Oh, it did. Totally. And I'm not, I knew it was going to kill everything. Hope, uh, hope most people did not try to go against that. <laughs> Oh yeah, no, no, everything got killed. <laughs> yep. But, but yeah, you know, uh, is there anything that we need to bring up? Are we doing anything? We're not doing anything for um. Spotlight yet? We haven't decided yet, right? No, we have not decided on spotlights. 
there might be some news next week because I might be going, I am, I'm not going to say might, I am going to an event. I'll talk about that next week because I'm very, very excited and I want to get something up and think about my plans before I announce all this. <laughs> but I got my work, I got my request off for approval and I'm very excited to share this with you. And it's not Japan, unfortunately. I'd be way more excited and screaming and announce it right here and now if I could. But I'll be doing a day trip somewhere. I wasn't planning on doing what I'm going to do, but I, there's there's some guest that I cannot pass up seeing. That is my <laughs> little sneak preview for next week. But yeah, um, I believe I believe Gray is going to be d- picking the artist anyway. It is. Should I announce where I should? I'll be going. Yeah, we we'll, we can talk. We'll more keep about that it next a secret. Week. Yeah. But yeah. Go check out the lovely site at ongakudu.com. Go follow us on the Instagrams and the Twitters at ongakudu. You can follow us on Facebook. You can follow us on the all the lovely social media stuff. You can follow us on YouTube also. You can also follow our affiliates. Koryu Hunter, he is our Japanese Twitch streamer friend and the current U-Haul for Luna as of right now. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. At least I stopped buying stuff last year. <laughs> so, yeah, he's, uh, you can follow him at twitch.tv slash Koryu Hunter, K-Y-O-R-Y-U-H-U-N-T-E-R. You can also follow our other affiliate, at Timber Taff, he is a Twitch streamer in his own right, and I believe he's doing a lot more various games now that he finished um, Octopath Traveler. So you can follow him at twitch.tv slash Timber Taff, T-I-M-B-E-R-T-A-F-T. But yeah, you can follow me at twitter on otyken1 and you can follow gray at ongaku gray and where can we find you luna on twitter i am luna maria 87 i don't go on there much don't expect that much from me and you can follow me at nerdy collector luna on instagram which i haven't been posting as much but i still some really cool stuff on there so you should check me out but yeah I want to thank you guys for listening to this week's episode of Ungaku DU. I'm your host, San- Ken, saying thank you very much and have a great day. Aloha. I hope everyone has a great rest. The, 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 I cannot talk today. I hope everyone. <laughs> I hope everyone has a great rest of their day. This is Luna saying it has been an amazing time tonight. I am signing off. Ja matane.